Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I was thinking about um, how this society nowadays and the sense of entitlement that people have that they don't think about or be grateful for things that are routine. For example, let's say you are going from home to your job or coming back. There's so much protection in between. So many things can happen, but really we are so entitled that we don't think about that. Alhamdulillah, Allah Taala took us from one point to the other. But it's so easy to let something goes wrong to complain about it. Um, how does one break that cycle that pay attention to the root, what so-called routine that we think is routine and be thankful for this? Come for sohbat. This is why sohbat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I already said, pour and do things with Bismillah and salawat. You're not doing it, I'm seeing. You're rushing. Don't rush. Okay. This is what sohbat is for. It breaks your bad habits. It makes you to acquire good habits. <coughs> Shukr, alhamdulillah. We say so many times, you have to make it into a habit. Don't ask me how and to make it to a habit. Like we say, pray five times a day. You're going to say how and we pray five times a day. It's up to you now. You want to make it a habit or not? Are you thinking when you're leaving, especially the men who are leaving the house to go to work, are you making the intention, I'm stepping out to make halal risk for the sake of Allah, for the sake of Islam? Are you making that intention before you step out? So all of this has to do with intention and your presence of mind, your consciousness. Are you praying, those of you who are leaving for work, are you making two rakats before you leave your house? Are you sitting at least to pray the two rakat and making the intention, you are here, you are there, you're praying behind who? Huh? No. So this is not just a mental exercise. To, oh Allah, Allah is making a... No, 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 no. In Islam, everything, yes? It has to come with an action. It's not just an intention, it has to come with an action. So it's not just a mental exercise, you understand? Pray two rakat. And say, Ya Rabbi, I'm leaving to get risk for the sake of Islam. Don't even put your family first. For the sake of Islam, for the sake of Haq. And if I die and I don't come back, make me to die a good death in your way. In fact, they say if you're earning risk and you die, it's considered one of the uh, deaths of jihad. Eh? Hmm? They become someone who is striving in the way of Allah. Make the intention. What we also say, we say, give some sadaqah, but make that intention. You can just do it like this, you can just go up and down, but the thought must be there. The thinking must be, the understanding must be. These days they tell you what to do, but they don't try to make you to understand and to train yourself to understand, to listen and to understand, to listen and to understand. Where, which ayat is saying, we do and we understand. We do and we obey. It's always, we hear and we obey. You hear meaning you understand. Sohbat is all about understanding. It's not just swallowing knowledge and doing it without understanding. So slowly you come to understand why I am thinking and why I'm not thinking. What caused me to not think? I didn't think because my mind was somewhere else. So bring your mind back. I didn't think to recite to an to kursi. I didn't think for that. Why you didn't think? Because you're so full of yourself, because you're in kafla. Then fix that. Do you understand? We don't want to say so many things. Shem Allah Shah Effendi even said, when the men, they come back from work, first thing you have to do is take off the clothes. In the old days, they used to do that. Yes, our fathers, our grandfathers, take off the clothes, they go take a shower. And then they come. It's not just for something physical, it's something spiritual too. All the eyes, all the nazar of the world is there. That's why in the old days, uh, women who go out, even now, amongst those ones who have an understanding, they have to go out to the store, whatever, they put an overcoat, something on their clothes. Shaitan sending all those people with nazar, shaitan himself looking. And then, when you come back, you take it off. You understand? So, 
All of it has to do with thinking. Thinking, listening, understanding, putting two and two together. That is what is required in sohbat. So many people in zikr, they're, they're flying somewhere else. There's no thinking. In prayer, oh, oh, forget about that, in namaz. It's gone. No. In sohbat, try to think. I know people switch off. I know people sleep. I know, but try to think, put two and two together. Because Shah Afendi, whenever he gives sohbat, he thinks and he connects. He's not just something on auto mode. He just talks. No, he's not. You have to think very carefully. You have to assess the situation and think and do. Do you do that? In the morning time, assess the situation. You must. Because you're going to go to work, you have to assess the situation anyway. You're doing work. So why not before you step up the house, you're thinking like that? So make habit. But the habit has to come from here. Because if it is just habit by like a robotic action, it finished. Time is finished, it's finished. Ramazan finished, it's finished. But if you are, make it into a habit that you're watching yourself, not just eating and drinking, don't just say, you know, I feel funny after Ramazan, I start eating breakfast and I feel funny. No, feel funny after Ramazan that you're not praying so much. Feel funny after Ramazan that you're not pulling yourself out from nonsense so much. Feel funny from that. Don't feel funny just from eating and drinking. And then that time, you're going to run to circles that makes you to think, to consider, to put your life together. That time, you move to action. This is prophetic, you understand? This is what the Sahabi Kiram, they had a mission, they had a plan, now think. Think, what is your mission? What is your plan? And their plan is not separate from the Prophet's plan. They followed him as a guide. Where you are going to hear. That's why Sahabi Kiram, they're different from the followers of the other Prophets. They're different. Except for those ones who are Munafiks, those are not followers anyway, and everybody knows that they're Munafiks. But they don't rest. They don't say, okay, now I have Islam, I can just mind my own business. No. Now that I have tariqat, now that I have bayat, now I know what it is, I just mind. No. They say, now, now more we're stepping forward now. Because there is a mission that is there. We must involve ourselves in that mission. So, as you like. And mission, if you ask me, so what is the mission? It's very, it's very easy. Shah Fendi's teachings, the whole world, as much as we can, must know. Doesn't matter if one person comes or a million persons. It doesn't matter, but we must do our part. Not this one world. A thousand worlds must know. You understand? So, and there are different things that everybody is trying to do. So at that time, what is his mission? His mission is Islam. His mission is to bring the light of the sun of Islam in this Ahir Zaman to shine into every house. Because not too many people know of that light and what they need, that light. So many people, they're in darkness, they don't even know that they're in darkness. Inshallah. So, we try. Fatiha.